and I rise to speak on the Greens Environment Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Amendment Climate Trigger Bill 2022. Um, now I do so with absolute joy because prior to this role I was an environmental lawyer and I've spent uh, most of my working life trying to improve our environmental laws, uh, and I'm very proud to be uh, speaking to this bill today. Now, as folk may or may not know, our environmental laws are really old, and they were written by Mr John Howard. So that probably tells you all you need to know about how much they actually protect the environment. Um, in my view, they are uh, set up to facilitate development, um, and given the constitutional division of who's responsible for what, those laws only cover uh, a significant impact on matters of national environmental significance. Now, those cover things like water, threatened species, um, Ramsar sites, world heritage, but interestingly, they do not include the climate. So we have a farcical situation where massive coal mine, for example, is uh, seeking approval under federal environmental laws, and the climate impacts of that coal mine aren't relevant to the approval decision. The minister is not obliged to even consider the impact on the climate when approving coal mines, and sadly she has a track record of approving coal mines, as did the previous environment minister, as has every environment minister since these laws were introduced. Um, and I'll, I'll come to more detail on that um, shortly. So we have a ridiculous situation where our environmental laws are not protecting our environment, they're not doing what they say on the tin, and the climate impacts of any large development, whether it's a fossil fuel development or any other sort of development, the climate impacts are simply not considered because they are not considered a matter of national environmental significance. Now, this bill would fix that. Um, and I might add that the government uh, claims to be reviewing our environmental laws at the moment, but you know, it's been a long time coming, folks. We have been waiting and waiting to see this alleged review of the EPBC Act, and we have seen uh, no progress on that. Um, this was an election commitment by the now Labor government to review those laws and, uh, with the intention, they say, to strengthen them, um, but we haven't seen uh, the results of that review. And in fact, the whole process of the review interestingly, has been shrouded in secrecy, with closed-door consultations occurring with selected uh, participants and selected stakeholders. So uh, goodness knows what's going to come out of that process or if we'll see it before uh, the election rolls around. But the government has a chance here today to strengthen our environmental laws and to fix that gaping hole in them that ignores the climate. Uh, we have the numbers to pass this bill. The government could be supporting this bill, and they could be delivering on an election promise to strengthen environmental laws. Unfortunately, the government have indicated they don't want to strengthen environmental laws in this way, and they don't want the climate impacts uh, of massive coal mines or coal seam gas projects or other unconventional gas projects. They don't want that to be protected and considered by our environmental laws, which, uh, frankly, is devastating to the many people who voted for a change of government thinking that they would, they would get a better environmental outcome um, from this particular political party. So anyway, the, the invitation is there for the government to support this bill. I'm going to go through a little bit about what it actually does. So this, would, uh, this bill would establish a new matter of national environmental significance and it would make sure that climate impacts and um, particular tonnage of emissions were a relevant consideration for the environment minister. And it's rather elegantly structured, if I do say so myself, in that it deems a project that will have between 25,000 and 100,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent scope one emissions, it deems that to be a significant impact. Now, the, the plain English explanation of that is it ensures that the minister for the environment does then assess the impacts of that level of emissions on our natural environment. On, on nature, on people, um, as part of her role as the environment minister. So for those emissions that are under 100,000 tonnes, that project would then be sent through the environmental assessment process that our EPBC Act sets up. Um, for anything that emits over 100,000 tonnes, this bill would say, well, the minister actually has to refuse that. The minister cannot in good conscience and cannot legally approve a project, whether it's a coal mine or a coal seam gas project, what have you, if it's going to have more than 100,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent emissions, scope one, the minister simply must refuse it. 
Now, folk might know that's how we treat nuclear uh, facilities under the EPBC Act. They are prohibited as well. So this takes that approach to large emitting projects of over 100,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent. Um, now, I think that's a really useful and sensible approach. It says, look at the impacts on the climate. They're going to be obviously so great. Just say no. Don't even countenance. Uh, don't even go through the appro approval process. Just that is unacceptable for our climate. That is a massive threat to nature, to biodiversity, to our way of life, to our agricultural productivity. Just say no. So that is the uh, that is the structure of the bill, and it also, I might add, requires the Climate Change Authority to develop a national carbon budget, and to assess that budget annually. And it, um, it requires the Environment Minister to assess projects that go through that assessment process, the 25,000 to 100,000 emissions scope one. It requires the minister to assess those projects against that national carbon budget, um, uh, and essentially to uh, to make sure that we're not going over uh, our international commitments, which sadly we are. We are emitting far more than we signed up to at the Paris um, Climate Conference. Many nations are. We are not on track to constrain global heating to a safe level. Um, and I'll talk more about some um, really sobering uh, communications from climate scientists and from the World Meteorolo uh, Meteorological Organisation shortly. Um, so that's the structure of the bill. And it's 2024, and it is completely outrageous that our environmental laws don't require climate to be considered. Climate change is the biggest threat to our natural world. It is an existential threat to the health of our rivers, to the quality of our forests, to food security, to the survival of wildlife, to the continued peaceful existence of our species on this planet. Um, we are meant to be assessing harmful impacts on the environment, and this is a massive blind spot in our current laws. We desperately need this climate trigger. Now, I just want to go now to the fact that this uh, last year alone, in 2023 alone, the Environment Minister approved five coal mines. The Environment Minister, the Minister for the Environment, under a Labor government, approved five coal mines. Now, this is when all of the world scientists are saying, stop approving new coal and gas and exit out of existing coal and gas as soon as you practically can. So thanks for nothing, Minister Plibersek. Um, five coal mines approved, and those approvals would cumulatively create almost 150 million tonnes of carbon emissions combined. So it was the Isaac River coal mine, the Star coal mine, the Ensham coal mine, which is a big one, Lake Vermont, and most recently Gregory Crinham in my home state of Queensland. Now that one um, is approved to operate until 2073, and it would add 31 million tonnes of CO2 to the atmosphere, equal to 6 per cent of Australia's annual emissions. Emissions under Labor have risen 3.6 million tonnes in 2023. I might add that a record number of threatened species have been added to our threatened species list, even though I thought this government had a no new extinctions policy. And we've had more and more extreme weather events impacting Australians. Homes destroyed in floods, wildlife killed in bushfires, people killed in bushfires. And yet the government has never met a coal mine that it hasn't wanted to approve. There's one exception to that, and I suspect the politics have quite a lot to do with that. The only coal mine that the Albanese government has rejected was Clive Palmer's Central Queensland coal project. Now that project would have involved the construction of two open cut pits to extract up to 10, 10 million tonnes of coal each year, and it was conveniently located just 10 kilometres from the edge of the Great Barrier Reef World Heritage Area. So in that instance, because of the impacts on the reef, the minister was able to reject that coal mine under our existing environmental laws. But we would like to give her the ability and the clear legal pathway to reject other coal mines and other fossil fuel developments and other large developments with that big CO2 equivalent footprint that I went through earlier. So um, it's great that the politics saw her refuse one coal mine, uh, but I'm afraid the five coal mines that have been proved under this government are utterly unacceptable um, and not at all what the community expects from this government. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the minister is saying that she's reviewing our environmental laws but has ruled out 
supporting a climate trigger, which makes absolutely no sense to me. And the government has pointed to the safeguard mechanism as their sole solution to the climate crisis. Well, it's not enough. Um, we need to consider climate impacts, but we also need to consider biodiversity impacts as well. And it is right that the climate impacts of developments be considered through the structure and framework of our environmental laws. You cannot rely on the safeguard mechanism alone. And I'd like to point out that the now Prime Minister, 20 years ago, introduced a bill that would achieve similar outcomes to the one that we're proposing today. Mr Anthony Albanese, in 2005, introduced a bill to add a climate trigger to our environmental laws, the very same laws that we still have to this day, because they're very old and they're not fit for purpose. So in 2005, Mr Albanese thought that these laws should include climate. And in, I'd like to quote from him. He says, the glaring gap in matters of national environmental significance is climate change. This bill, his bill, closes that gap. It is time to act. It is time for procrastination to end. We cannot any longer afford to be complacent on this issue. Well, if we couldn't be complacent 20 years ago, we certainly can't waste a single moment now. And I would urge the Prime Minister to let his folk in the Senate know that, in fact, he does want to support a climate trigger in our environmental laws, like he said he did 20 years ago. Every time the minister approves a new coal or gas project, it makes the climate crisis worse. Every tonne of coal mined and every tree cleared puts Australia's precious environment and communities on the front line of the climate crisis. This bill would close a glaring loophole in our environmental laws, and we are urging everybody in this chamber to support it. Now, um, I want to just go into some of the details of, the, uh, sadly, the environmental impact of the climate crisis. Now, we know the climate crisis is caused by the burning of coal, the mining and burning of coal and gas, and Australia is doing an awful lot of that, way more than our planet can handle. Our coal and gas exports add over 1.1 billion tonnes of emissions to the atmosphere every year. And uh, add on to that the half a billion tonnes that we emit domestically, and Australia is one of the biggest contributors to the climate crisis in the entire world. The new coal and gas projects that Labor has in the pipeline would add over 1.7 billion more tonnes of emissions to the atmosphere every year. And now what all of those new coal and gas projects mean is that Darwin would be in uninhabitable from the oppressive heat. The Northern Rivers region and Mianjin, uh, or Brisbane where I live, would be getting wiped out by cyclones moving south, and the Murray-Darling Basin would dry up, destroying communities and our agricultural exports. Australia's coal and gas corporations opening new coal and gas projects and burning it either here or overseas is a matter of international significance and a matter of national environmental significance. So this bill does what science demands. And what the science demands is no new coal, oil or gas infrastructure being built from now. Uh, we need to exit out of our existing infrastructure, but we certainly can't be opening up any new coal, oil or gas mines. The EU Science Agency recorded that last year, for a full year, the world's temperatures exceeded one and a half degrees of additional warming. Um, that's what we said collectively as a, as a planet we didn't want to go above. And unfortunately, we have already hit one and a half degrees of warming. Emissions have gone up since this government came to power, and this bill would stop them going up even further. The World Meteorological Organisation said that 2023, last year, was the hottest year on record. But global emissions are higher than ever, and they're on track to increase. Coal and gas profits have never been higher either, and their political stranglehold has never been tighter. The head of the WMO has confirmed acceleration in the rate of global heating um, and its impacts have caught even scientists by surprise. The rate of human-caused climate change is accelerating and it's adding to a growing chorus of leading scientists. I quote from um, World Meteorological, uh, Meteorological Organization Secretary General, greenhouse gas levels are record high, global temperatures are record high, sea level rise is record high, Antarctic sea ice is record low. It's a deafening cacophony of broken records. We can fix this trajectory. We need to fix our broken environmental laws 
and ensure that the climate impacts of new fossil fuel projects are taken into account and that new coal and gas, large new coal and gas, must be refused by the so-called Environment Minister. Authorised by Al Waters, Australian Greens, Canberra.